For women also looking for a good resource, I highly recommend the HER Foundation. And speaking of the HER Foundation, this morning we have nurse, executive director, and co-founder of the HER Foundation, Kimber McGibson. She joins us this morning. Kimber, thank you so much for being here. HG is something not many people even know about. I briefly, really even after watching that four minute piece, I briefly touched on some of it, but this is way more than just extreme nausea, extreme vomiting. Kimber, you went through this yourself. Yes, I had two HG pregnancies and unfortunately for me, it lasted all nine months. So it's a very long road and it's very debilitating. Um, moms just really struggle to function. Um, the majority of them lose uh, a lot of weight and often are unable to work and take care of themselves even. I mean, just taking a shower and eating just small amounts of food can be impossible for weeks to months for many moms. You know, it's 2020. The HD Foundation has yeah. been around for what, about 20 years now. 20 That's years. just hard to wrap your brain around it. My mom, uh, she went through the same thing, but she lived in Russia with both me and my sister. Never got an official diagnosis because in other countries, it's kind of really just overlooked. It's more of like women are even guilt tripped into thinking that they just don't want their babies. Yes. Yeah. In fact, um, even, I mean, when I had my first child back in 1999, I was told by my midwife that um, I was planning to go to grad school. Actually, I had just started graduate school and I uh, had just gotten married and we had a honeymoon surprise. And she said, well, you weren't planning to get pregnant for a couple more years. So I think this is a symbolic way of rejecting your pregnancy, hoping to vomit up your pregnancy so you can wait a couple more years. And I'm like, I came in here because I thought I had a stomach ulcer, not because I thought I was pregnant. So this is definitely not rejection, but it's amazing that people still think that women are making this up or that is somehow psychological after all these years. Yeah, it's incredible. Some women don't go on to have more kids because the first experience was so bad. Talk about that. Yeah, well, you know, many women don't. In fact, the majority of women limit themselves to one or two children. We have, you know, some women, but very few. A number will go on to use surrogacy, like Dr. Faiso, um, and uh, adoption. So many of our um, many of our community just can't handle. I mean, they told me after my second pregnancy, no more, no more, no more kids. Your body will not survive. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's and that was with with treatment. It's yeah. just that it, it takes a huge toll on your body. Kimber, the financial burden. I mentioned it. It's huge. Some women aren't able to go back to work for nine months. What do you want to see done on a national level? You know, one of the things that's not talked about a lot, you mentioned it a little bit, is it's not just the financial burden during pregnancy, but it's also the financial burden postpartum. So we have all these women who are unable to work and lose their jobs, have to drop out of school, whatever they're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, if they're single, then, you know, it's catastrophic for many of them. Some of them lose their jobs and then lose their health insurance. So definitely we would love to see like mandated, you know, health care for, for women with HG. Um, in some capacity and again, and also postpartum as many women have residual issues. But we also have to look at the long-term issues because women don't receive care that they need, especially the more expensive nutritional therapies. Um, they develop, um, they often have more severe symptoms, have complications. They may have children with the neurodevelopmental issues, as you mentioned, uh, sensory processing disorder, even autism. And these are not children that you just go in and get a diagnosis, get a medication and they're treated. These are children that don't fit on any um, any specific diagnosis very clearly and knowing how to treat them is almost impossible. So women will have their own mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, trauma. Then they'll have children that have sensory processing issues that don't yeah. see huge burden. Kimber, I hate to cut you off, but we're coming up on a break here. Five seconds. Thank you so much for joining us. An important conversation for sure.